Morning, folks. Welcome to Inspired Life Family, in Jesus' name. And you guys online, bless you. Nice to see you. And um, we welcome you on this beautiful, rainy day. When I wake up in the morning and I see it's grey out there, I say, thank you, Jesus. What a wonderful day. And inside my mind says, oh, come on, man. You know, come on, man. Well, <clears throat> we give glory to God in the midst of any circumstance or situation. Now, we're going to look at um, the battle standard that God has raised up for our victory. Um, I think we're a little bit loud. I don't want to shout at the people. It's number two. Just Okay. <clears throat> you can still hear me. All right. um, the battle standard of victory. And God has ordained a battle standard for each one of us in our lives. And if we don't take up the standard, the battle standard of God, uh, it's not His fault that things don't go right in our lives. Now, if you look at Isaiah 59, it says, God says to the people, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened. Okay? That it cannot save, neither is his ear heavy, that he cannot hear. Now, Israel was asking the question, But Lord, can't you save us? Can't you um, do something? Is your, is your arm shortened on our behalf? Don't you have the power anymore to do anything on our behalf? You know, many times we face situations and we think now, Lord, where are you in this? When are you going to come and help me? When are you going to help me through this thing? Are you, is your arm shortened? Uh, on, is your ear heavy that it won't hear my cries and my call? Now, God answers them this question and He says to them, why? He says, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So Israel was asking all these questions. Well, Lord, can't you just come through for us uh, in the circumstance? And God says, no. Because you have been separated. You have separated yourself. Your iniquities have separated between you and your God. You see, people, we spoke last week about the doctrine of Balaam. And one of the things is, you're under grace, so there is no sin. Your past, present, and future sins are all forgiven. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> Let me tell you something that's very dangerous doctrine. Very dangerous doctrine. Okay? Um, and people preach that kind of stuff because they have ulterior motives in their own hearts. And there's a scripture that God says, I will give you prophets according to the idols of your heart. So in other words, you'll sit and listen, and you'll think, yeah, I like that, I like that, because you know why it agrees with the, uh, agrees with the idol of the heart. And you think, oh, it's, it's of God. We need to discern by the Spirit. So Israel was not being helped by God because of their sin. It is separated, and our sin will separate us even as believers in Jesus Christ, separate us from the blessing of God. If we are continuing without repentance, don't worry about it, and we believe that kind of doctrine, it's got grace of God gone way beyond. And my question is, how come, if the church is under the grace of God, which we are, we're born again, and we come to God, through, not through our works, but through the grace of God, His sacrifice. Why then, does Jesus say to Jezebel? He said, I've given her time to repent. Why did she need to repent if past, present, and future sins are forgiven? He said, I gave her time to repent, but she did not. Now comes judgment. And the scripture says, if we will judge ourselves, we will not be judged. But when we are judged as believers, we are chastened by the Lord. Things happen. It seems like God's arm is too short. Its ear is heavy to our prayer and to our cries. So, <clears throat> God has hidden His face from Israel. And then He goes on, and He speaks about, uh, and then He says, Your hands are defiled with blood. Your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered perverseness. Let me tell you something. 
And if you read the whole list here, it's quite a, uh, we're not going to go through all of it, but it's interesting for you to read. If you read the whole list here, God will never say, oh, well, you're going to find out yourself what's wrong. He'll always reveal by the Holy Spirit here what's wrong. He'll reveal to us by, us by the Spirit of God. He will show us things to come. He will show us where we've missed it. So we don't have to have and be in a mystery. So God will show what is wrong. And it says in verse uh, 11, uh, you roar like bears and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, there is none. For salvation, but it is far off from us. So even in the midst of all of this that Israel was doing, they were looking for God. They were looking for justice. Uh, they were looking for salvation. And it's just far away from them. And then uh, he, he says, For your transgressions, verse 12, are multiplied before you, and your sins testify against you. For your transgressions are with us, and for your iniquities we know them. In transgressing and lying against the Lord, and departing away from God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. In other words, they separated themselves. Doing their own thing. Everything's fine, don't worry. But now comes the thing where <clears throat> uh, verse 14 says, And judgment is turned away backward, and justice stands afar off. For truth is fallen in the streets, and integrity cannot enter. Now we look at our lives. This is very a description of what's happening. Judgment, uh, you don't know. Depending on who... Um, the judge is and how much money is paid, certain judgments are made. It happens in every country. Um, truth is fallen in the streets and there is no integrity. It's very difficult to find integrity in our lives today. And then it says, truth is fallen um, and he has departed from evil or he that has departed from evil makes himself a prey. In other words, if you decide to go against the corruption, you become a target. We've seen that in our news. You become a target of corruption. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. There was no righteousness. There was no judgment. And Israel was facing the situation because of their sins, and God wasn't coming through, but now God says something. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. There was no intercessor. Now the intercessor that God is about to introduce is not just the intercessor to stand and say, well, uh, this one says he's sorry, so forgive him. Okay? This intercessor is a military intercessor that he's talking about. This is the captain of the host of the armies of the Lord. God is bringing forth that one into battle and he says there was no intercessor therefore his own arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness sustained him now this is a prophecy about jesus this is a prophecy for seeing jesus christ coming into the world because he's the only one through his righteousness was able to purchase and pay the price for each one of us and then it says he got his battle dress on. Now, if you were in the military, uh, you'd find the battle dress. Remember what the battle dress looks like? Fonis, did you remember? Yeah, that's what it's supposed to be. Our battle dress was our nice beret and nice smart clothes and nice polished shoes. That's not battle dress. <clears throat> and that's what some people think. They have the outward appearance that, oh, they're fine. Everything's doing well. The battle dress is battle dress for war, to do warfare. And that's what he says here. He put on righteousness as a breastplate. Doesn't that sound something familiar? Ephesians chapter 6. So he's putting on the armor of God. He's not just walking there, okay, casual. Okay, too many times we are so casual about facing the enemy. And, and he just laughs because he says, you're not ready. You're not even got your battle dress on. I remember having this dream. It stirred me and uh, um, I was so uneasy about it. I went into battle 
with all the star duck and all that good, and um, I had no boots on. That was something terrible. That was something terrible. I thought, no, bare feet out in the back, and you cannot do that. Okay? And I believe it's what God was saying, are you prepared, fully clothed, fully prepared for battle? Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness of this age. Therefore, put on the whole armor of God. This is the armor that Jesus put on. And as a breastplate of righteousness and a helmet of salvation upon his head, and he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. He was, had a divine purpose. He was not going to be merciful to the enemy. He was not, he has vengeance. And there's a, one of the things that this, in Isaiah talks about, his vengeance, the vengeance in his heart sustained him. In other words, when he went to the cross, there's two things, for the joy set before and the vengeance that he will destroy the works of darkness and eventually when he comes back, he will destroy the nations and trample them underfoot. That was in his heart. So he was fully clothed, fully ready. And then it says, according to their deeds, according he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord. The greatest name is the name of Jesus Christ. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The most powerful name. And he's given us authority to use that name against the forces of darkness, against everything that we face. And then he says, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, so when God speaks about the enemy coming in, and because of their sin, coming in like a flood, he says the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, what shall lift up Raise up a standard against him. Now, in military and in battle, there was always a standard. We stand under, this is like the lion of the tribe of Judah. When Judah went out to battle, they had a standard with a lion on it. So everybody knew and identified, we are part of that. We are part of the victory that the lion of the tribe of Judah. So that's a battle standard. But God has something he's not going to raise just... Uh, a flag or an in, uh, ensign, he is going to raise Jesus as the battle standard against the enemy. So, when the enemy comes in like a flood, now, you'll be surprised to find out what that enemy is. Who knows who the enemy is from the, the Hebrew word? You must study your Bibles, guys. <laughs> When the enemy comes in like a flood, now we think in enemy, we were taught uh, the Russians are our enemy, okay? Um, and uh, they put in propaganda against us, and I spoke to a Russian uh, captain, and he says, and they were four years, he spent four years in, in the military, and he said, we were, we were uh, brainwashed against you capitalists, <laughs> and we were brainwashed against the communists, and all kinds of brainwashing went on. But... When, so we thought that's the enemy. When the enemy comes in like a flood. So what enemy comes in like a river? Just, just floods. One guy said to me uh, this week, he says, I don't understand it. This happened, that happened, that happened, that happened in, in this week against him. He can't understand it's like a, a flood. Well, this is what it is. Well, sticking there. The enemy, the Hebrew word for enemy, okay, is a narrow and a tight place, trouble, the opponent, adversary, affliction, distress, uh, something, squeezing into a mold, tribulation, trouble, it means to cramp, to be afflicted, to besiege, to bind up, in distress, 
lets the enemy narrower, oppress, pains, shut up, be in a strait, trouble, vexed, anything that will cause poverty, sickness, death, lack, death, heartache, frustration, cares of this life. That's what that Hebrew word means. All of those things. And he says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, which was happening to Israel, God says, I'm raising up a standard. I'm raising up a standard against the enemy. I'm raising up an intercessor. Now, one of the parts, one of the, the ministries of an intercessor or uh, characteristics of an intercessor is a champion. Remember when uh, Goliath stood and called him the champion of well, he was the champion of, of the Philistines. Okay? And that one means someone who will take a battle on behalf of another. That's an intercessor. That's the champion of Jesus Christ. He's the captain of our salvation. He would take on everything that the devil could lay against him and take on all the punishment of our sins in order to get, be, set us free. That's the champion that we have. And then it says in verse 20, And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn. Now here's the key. Turn. Turn from what? Turn from transgression. <clears throat> in Jacob, says the Lord. Those who turn, we have a Redeemer. We have the champion of the world, Jesus Christ. We have the one that God gave authority because of who he is. Because he put on the full armor of God. He didn't go into battle without that. He didn't go into battle not knowing exactly what he was going to face. It was so, uh, the stress was so much that he, in the garden when he knew he was about to face and become, and become the very standard of the Lord. His, the blood burst, uh, burst, the veins burst in his head. And that's why he said, Jesus said in John 3.14, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Jesus foresaw that he was going to be the battle standard. For everyone who would turn from darkness, turn from their transgression to him. Now it's not about turning first and trying to repent and trying to do all the good things and then say, okay, God, do you accept me? The key is, first of all, to turn in our hearts. Lord, I need you. Lord, I can't do it in my own strength. I can't serve you in my own strength. I can't get rid of these things that are holding me captive. But Lord, I'm turning from that to you for your help and for your salvation. And that's, about, that's why he's the Redeemer. And he's the one that purchased us we are not our own. We've been purchased with the blood of Jesus Christ. Not with silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We've been purchased. Now, he's the battle standard against all of the enemy. Everything that we face, Jesus Christ has already won the victory. Does that mean to say that we sit back? Well, the Lord has won the victory. The Lord has done it all. So I'm just going to rest in that. Well, you can rest in what he's done. But when you rest, you rest in taking up everything that God has given. Taking up everything that he's won for us. And, then, and he says in verse um, 21, As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit that is upon you. Remember Jesus spoke about the Holy Spirit. Being the Spirit of God has anointed me to do what? To preach the gospel to the poor. To heal the sick. To cleanse the lepers. His, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So the Holy Spirit that has anointed Jesus, the Spirit of the Lord, will raise up a standard against the enemy. Against everything that we face in our lives, Jesus said, you have good cheer. In me, you will have peace. In the world, are we in the world still? Anyone left yet? <laughs> We're in the world. So in me, you will have peace. In the world, you'll still be in the world. What is going to happen? In the world, you will have tribulation. Okay? What's a tribulation in Afrikaans? Tribulasi. <laughs> Made that one up with notes of George. Got no idea what it is. Tribula what is tribula tribulation? Drama. 
Drama, ja, oké, okay. al lang. Gemors. We'll face all of that. But we have someone. He is the captain of the host of the armies of the Lord. In him we have the victory. Paul said, in everything, God has caused me to triumph over all. So that if you look at Paul's life, I mean his lists of things that he faced, God help us that we ever face that. What he faced. And he said, God has delivered me out of all of these tribulations. And that's why I could rejoice. Because he knew God's going to come through. He's going to raise up the standard in his heart and in his life. And he's not going to allow Satan to get the victory. In nothing. He's going to take that. And he says, I glory in tribulation. Anyone done that? <coughs> not easy, but that's the key of what God has given to us. We've been ransomed. He paid the full ransom price for us to purchase us out of darkness into his mother's light. And Hebrews 2 verse 14 says, For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, <coughs> it says, like, He also likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. Through death. You kind of think that, that I know there's, there's a few um, pictures that they, on the internet about Jesus arm wrestling with Satan. No, no, no. Satan thought he had the victory. Satan didn't know. It was a mystery that in order to destroy death and him that had the power, the authority of death, Jesus had to die. But thank God it's the same spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead. He dwells in us. The Spirit of God raised him up. We celebrated, I think on Friday, it was Ascension Day. Thank God for Ascension Day, because he's not on the earth anymore. He is in glory, and he stands in glory, and seated in heavenly places, we seated with him, and he ever lives to make intercession. He doesn't have to fight. He's already fought for us. But now he makes intercession for us. We have Jesus Christ, the righteous. Peter says... Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, adversary is in a lawsuit, that's a gray suit, okay. Your adversary, the devil, <laughs> as a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may devour. Devour with what? Devour with all of these things. All the cares, all of those things, all the troubles. He just wants to devour us. Don't submit to it. Because he says, James says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will do what? Flee from you. So this word here will lift up a standard. Uh, it, act, it says in the Hebrew as well, is to put him, that's the enemy, to flight. To put the enemy to flight. Submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will be put to flight. He will flee. Because we have authority to do that. Jesus Christ is our battle standard. And when we stand with Him, you see the battle standard, who do you stand with? Who do you stand for? Well, I stand with Him. And it has given us instruction, let's use it. It's given us authority over all the power of the enemy, over all the works of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. So when you take up uh, our, our stand against all of the works of darkness. That's why in Numbers chapter 2, this is a very interesting scripture, Numbers chapter 2, it says, Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard. And it says, With an ensign of their father's house, far off about the, uh, from the, uh, about the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall pitch. Every man shall pitch his own standard. So what it's talking about in Israel when they were camped, each man had a standard of which, uh, part of which tribe they were and which family they belonged to. Each one had to do and pitch their own standard. And this is what God is saying to us. We need to raise up the standard. We need to raise up victory in Jesus Christ. That's why he says, put on the whole armor of God. In Ephesians chapter 6, 
He's talking about each one of us. Putting on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to do what? And how many times did he say stand? He talks about having stand. To stand against the wiles of the devil. Finally, verse 10. My brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Don't, don't brag and say, oh, well, I'm, I'm tough. I can handle it. What actually to me, I'll tell you. No, I've got big shoulders. I can handle it. The Lord knows how much I can do. Really? What are you actually saying? I don't need God in my life. That's dangerous talk. That's very dangerous talk. It says, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. And how are we going to be strong in the Lord? He says, put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, and against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places that are against us. And they bring in all these things against us. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. What is the evil day? We've just seen what the enemy is. All these things uh, trying to squeeze us into a mold, trying to limit us in our performance in life. God wants us to be free, to take the stand and withstand in the evil day. And having done all, in other words, having done everything that's necessary, Stand. Having done all, stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. That's not just a walk in the park. That's not just, okay, uh, I've, I've heard people pray this. Okay, Lord, now put on the helmet of salvation, now put on the breastplate of righteousness and the belt of truth. This is an application. When you put on the helmet of salvation, you understand who you are in Christ. You understand that you have authority and you take that authority. That's what you take in there. The word of God, this, I take the shield of faith. Well, how? When you take the shield of faith, you apply it. And the sword of the spirit, you quote the word. That's what it's talking about. And it's the whole armor that overtook and conquered Satan and all of his works and has given that authority to us. But we need to take that stand. And having done all, stand. And stand in the presence of God. Stand against the works of darkness. And stand and believe in God's word. That God has delivered us out of all of this tribulation. It hasn't stopped the tribulation. But thank God. God can make all things together for the good. Of those who love God. And are called according to his purpose. And even though Paul and Silas were beaten. Because they cast out a, a, a familiar spirit. From a, a woman and they were taken and beaten and they began to praise God in the midst of it offered up a sacrifice of praise at midnight took them a while to get over all of the pain but it got, they got there and they never said anything until midnight they began to praise God and God brought about an earthquake set the captives free and the, the, the centurion him and his household got saved they probably would never have got saved unless Paul was right there in the place. So God is able to turn every circumstance, any circumstance around. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise up a standard against it. The standard that Jesus Christ was raised. And in our hearts, the gifts of the Spirit operate. He will show us things to come. So when the Holy Spirit will show you something, Sometimes you think, why am I preparing this? Why am I reading that? Why am I doing this? Very often you may find that later on, you actually need everything that you did. 
You begin, you get an unction to study something or scriptures to put, and you get that unction, study it, because that's part of the shield against all the works of darkness, against the enemy. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, God's Spirit will raise up a standard against him. The Word of God, the power of Jesus Christ, He's won the victory for us. He's ascended to glory. Thank God He was raised up by the power of God. God is raising up His people to be strong in the Lord, to take up the shield of faith, take up the armor of God, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil days, that you don't buckle under it, thank God, and He works all things together for the good because we love God and are called according to His purpose. Amen. He'll give us a monster strategy in many, many cases what to do. And it's a strategy that He gives followers. He knows the things to come. He knows what's happening. Give us wisdom, Father, in everything we set our hand to. Wisdom in everything that we face. And for our families that we can stand and intercede, stand in the gap on behalf of them.